Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. My name is Harkirat Singh. And I'm Pupendra Singh. And welcome to Seeking Sikhism. Now today we're going to be talking about, well how about I say it in Gurmukhi first, in the Punjabi language. We're going to be talking about Dukh and Sukh. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with those words, you might be thinking about what that means. We can let them guess. Dukh and Sukh, right? So Dukh is basically pain, suffering. And Sukh is pleasure or happiness. So today we're going to be talking about, the topic is pleasure and pain. And uh, Pavan Singh, well, what, is, what is true pleasure? What is true pain? What is Well, in our whole life, all our efforts are based on two things. Hmm. We are trying to acquire pleasure, trying to gain pleasure, hmm. and trying to avoid pain. Right. So our whole life is basically based on those concepts where we try to uh, get pleasure from objects, from things, um, from experiences, from people, and we try to avoid pain in our lives. Yeah. Right? I think it's just the way our human mind is conditioned to do that. That's, it's just it's a natural thing that all of us have in common. Yeah. So naturally what we do is we surround ourselves with people who bring us pleasure, and we stay away from those that bring us pain. So in a way, a lot of times our friendships, our relationships in the world, are kind of based on that concept, and a lot of times we don't really notice it. But the reason why our friends are our friends mm. is because we are sort of acquiring pleasure from each other, mm. acquiring happiness from each other. And when we don't get that, what happens is the friendship breaks up and people kind of yeah. you know, drift away. Yeah, so like unconditional love, it does exist, but I think it's rare. I, I do think it's mm. rare. Like true Careful, don't unconditional say that. love. Aren't you married, man? <laughs> <laughs> unconditional love is rare. <laughs> well, between the husband and wife uh, <laughs> is there, right? And then also between like the kind of love that you have between, um, you know, like yeah. a mother and a child as yeah. well, right? So some love is very, it's unconditional. Mm. And no matter what the other person does, like they love that person. Like a mother always loves a child no matter what a child does, most of the time, Definitely. right? And, um, but sometimes that unconditional love, we may think it is, but it's not, right? We might think that I'll do anything with this person, but when the person starts bringing the pain in their life, yeah. then we could sort of, we sort of start drifting away. Like, for example, like somebody who's married, they might think, you know what, this is unconditional love, we love each other so much, but sometimes what happens is the pain comes in, it um, leads to divorce, stuff like that, yeah. right? So true unconditional love, what is that? I think that that comes from God. That's something Definitely. that is eternal. God's love is unconditional. God Definitely. loves everyone equally, right? It doesn't matter if the person's a sinner or a saint. God loves everybody yeah. equally. And imagine what you would feel if you recognize that unconditional love. Like when you're a young, young child, a young baby, like you mentioned the mother and the child. And when you're young, you, you see your mother and father, that's your first sangha, through your first environment, and you see how much love they have for you, and you get the impression that they'll do anything for you. They'll do anything. And in the same way, we should recognize that God is an all-loving being, and He will do anything for you. And when you recognize that, that, that little child who sees that, they'll want to do anything they want for God, right? They'll want to, you, you would want to do it for God. And if you see God in other people, mm -hmm. you'll find that naturally you're doing seva which is selfless service, and you're serving God and other people, mm -hmm. and you're also serving God who's, yeah. 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 Well, the type of pain, there's a lot of different types of pain that we, we have in the world. Like, this show is based, going to be talking about pain and pleasure. Mm. And in Gurbani, we're going to talk about towards the end of the show, in Gurbani, it says that we should treat pain and pleasure alike. Mm. Look at them alike. It's a very hard concept to that's, grasp. That's tough. How can we treat pain and pleasure alike. They're yeah. different things. Like one makes us feel good, one <clears throat> makes us feel, feel sad or depressed or yeah, whatever. Definitely. But, uh, let's, but before we do that, let's talk about different types of pain that okay. there are. Yeah. Well, one type of pain is physical pain. You know? No like, examples needed. <laughs> no examples needed. Okay. <laughs> physical pain, like the kind of pain that, you know, you get hurt or you have a disease. Yeah. Or when, you know, I was a kid and me and my brothers were practicing wrestling moves <laughs> on each other and like hurting each other, right? Yeah. <laughs> we thought it was real. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know wrestling was fake. Yeah. So anyways, that's the type of pain you get, like, you know, physical kind of pain. Yeah, definitely. Then there's also mental pain. Mm -hmm. Mental pain could be like anxiety or it could be depression mm. or it could be stress. Uh, things like that. Things that are of the mind. So we have physical uh, pain, we have mental pain, mm. and the third pain is one that is often neglected. Yeah. It's something we don't even realize, we don't even realize that pain, mm. and that is spiritual pain. And the spiritual pain is pain of separation from God. It seems like spiritual pain is like the utmost pain. It is the most important one, and it's often covered up by mental and physical exactly. pain. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And it seems like once you realize that spiritual pain, when you see that separation between you and God, then it seems like the other pains, they just don't matter. Yeah. Right? And what, ha what happens often, like even uh, feeling that pain of separation from God, it's mm -hmm. a great blessing. Yeah. It's a great blessing in itself. But most of the time what happens, like you said, 
is we're so focused on attaining uh, physical and mental happiness mm. and avoiding physical and mental pain that we totally forget about our spiritual pain, but, our separation from God. But it seems like spiritual pain, it's almost like a pain that we should always have around us, right? Because pain and pleasure, they're two things that kind of go hand in hand, and they're almost like needed for each other. We have pleasure to better describe what pain is, and vice versa. So it seems like spiritual pain is something that you should keep d close to you. Mm -hmm. But what exactly does that mean? Does that mean that we should always be sad? We should always feel that longing for God is always be depressed. Like what? What's no, I think pain? I think that uh, the sp like when we start doing meditation, mm -hmm. we start to actually realize that the separation is there, and that's oh. a big thing. Just realization of the separation or the separation between us and God, having that realization of that is is a huge, huge gift in itself, right? Because look at our body, for example, we feel physical pain, and when we feel pain, it's like a warning system. Mm. It reminds us, like it tells us that okay, there's pain. Mm -hmm. and do something about it kind of thing right so if we don't really realize that pain like there's actually some people i was watching on tv there's some people who are born and in their brain the part of the brain that processes uh pain yeah it doesn't work oh. and they can't feel pain so they gotta be very careful in their life so if they're sitting there and they have their hand on a stove if they're not looking oh, they no. won't even be able to tell right so something like we can kind of link that towards spiritual pain uh, when we feel, like through meditation, what mm -hmm. happens, we start feeling that connection with God, and we start yeah. feeling that we are not totally connected with God, and we do yeah. actually feel that separation from God, um, then we can do something about it, right? Because first, you got to kind of realize that there is a pain, or realize that there is yeah. a separation, and then you can work yeah. on uh, making it better. So one quick uh, quote I wanted to give from Sri Guru Granth Sahib about pain and separation. Guru Sahib tells us, Rom Rom Man Tan Ek Bedan Me Prab Dekhe Bin Nidana but yeah. And what that means is each and every hair on my head and my b mind and body suffer the pains of separation. Without seeing God, without seeing my God, I cannot sleep. Yeah. Right? So it's just like that, it's that, it's that uh, intense desire that wells up inside Definitely. through meditation of acquiring God. I think that's the concept of Bairag, a word that's often usually comes up in, in, in Gurbani. And what Bairag is, is like I love that word that you're using, it's realization. And Bairag is almost like a deep realization of this worldliness, and it's that desire to get towards God. And Bairag, I guess it means shunning worldly distractions and attractions like that. But it's tough because, you know, you need pain and you need pleasure, but how how could you hold on to that pain? Like, is it something that you should always be depressed about? And what exactly is worldly pleasures, right? What is true pleasure and mm -hmm. what is true pain? We said how pain is kind of, the the true pain is separation from God. And once you see that pain, other pain doesn't even exist. Like in the case of many mart martyrs right out there, like Jesus Christ, Guru Arjun Dev Ji, who went through crazy intense pain, right? Physically. And then they real and they almost didn't feel it because it seems like the only pain that was most important to them was spiritual pain. Mm -hmm. So how how do we incorporate that into our life today? Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. For the like for the guru example you gave right now, like like physically they didn't feel that pain because mm -hmm. of the fact that they were one with God. They they had that meditation and they had that um, that oneness with God. So that pain was not there. Mm -hmm. um, but why do we suffer? I guess the question we got to ask: Why is there suffering in the world? Why do we feel pain in the first place? Right? Yeah. And there's different reasons for that. Um, the one reason is in Sikhism we do believe in karma. We believe in that uh, that the karma that we have done in our pre in our in our past that they do affect our future, mm -hmm. and, that, and the karma that we create for us now it will affect our future as well. So um, karma is something that Sikh, that we do believe in. That we believe in that sometimes some things that we are experiencing now is a result of our previous actions, Definitely. ones we may not even remember. Yeah, and that's they a have part heard. of life, pain and pleasure. And uh, pain, people say no pain, no gain. Right? That's yeah. definitely not, not the laundry detergent. We mean pain, no pain, no progression. Right? It's the same way when you, when you go to work out. Right, you don't, you don't like, you know. When I go to the gym, if you, I don't know if you've noticed, but when I'm you nursed. go, <laughs> when you go, you only get that progression when you feel that pain, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you only get that progression when you feel that pain, and in the same way, when you feel that spiritual pain, then you'll get that progression because then you'll get that bad mm -hmm. you'll get that sense of longing for God, and, you, and it's in that sense, it's in that longing. It's in that strive towards God that you might find peace of mind and happiness. Yeah, like um, there's a quote, what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger, yeah. right? So in the same way, suffering, when we suffer, it's like a learning experience for us. When we go through pain, it's a learning experience. We can learn from these experiences, right? So we shouldn't look at it as always being a negative thing, right? We can, uh, we can become stronger and also 
in Gurbani, there's a Gurbani Pankti, it says, mm-hmm. Dukh daru sukh rog peya, ja sukh tamana hui. Mm-hmm. It's very beautiful what it says. It says, Dukh daru. And daru is a medicine. And it says, Dukh daru. So it says that pain is a medicine. You might think, how can pain be a medicine? Mm-hmm. And then the next part, it says, it just says, Dukh daru sukh rog peya, that happiness is a disease. So we might think, we well, shouldn't it be the other way around? Yeah. But no, there's a reason for that. Dukh daru, uh, pain is a med- is the medicine, and happiness is a disease, or pleasure is a, is a disease. Mm. And the reason for that is, ja suk tamana hui. That if our life is always full of just pleasure, 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 then we don't have the desire to atta- look for God. Like, you know, see, in all relig- religions, when something in our life goes bad, or we're suffering, or we're going through pain, what do we do? We turn towards God. You turn towards that. Right? Like, oh God, please help me, please help me. And it's, it's funny that we only do it then. And we don't do it then. And naturally it comes out too. Even yeah. somebody who um, doesn't believe in God sometimes, something might happen like an atheist and something happens, they're like, oh God, right? <laughs> they might catch themselves saying it, right? Because naturally it just kind of comes out. Yeah. And um, uh, because we, we uh, during tough times, we look towards God for help, for support, yeah. right? So sometimes what happens is if our life is always just full of pleasure, 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 mm. and then we may not ever remember God. We may not ever remember our, our true source. We don't feel that suffering until we prioritize and we see what our real suffering is. If you prioritize your pleasures and pains, you're going to come to simply alt- utmost pleasure or anand or parmanand, which is the utmost pleasure, the superior pleasure, the superior anand, and then you're going to come to your absolute superior pleasure, uh, suffering. And you see that these, these two extremes, and you, anything but union with God, anything but parmanand will mm-hmm. be suffering. Yeah, example that from uh, Gurbani is, Kabir jis marande de jagdare, Mere man anand, marne hi te paye, puran parmanand. Mm-hmm. That Kabirji says that this whole world is afraid to die. Everybody's afraid to die. But Kabirji goes, when I think of death, he goes, I get happy. He gets joy, I'm joyful. Mm-hmm. Why? He said, only through dying can pure, that the highest state of bliss be attained. Only through dying, when you become Definitely. one with God. Yeah, and it's in recognizing the suffering and practicing this bairag. It's it's almost like a reminder that you are you're, of your dedication to this philosophy. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, Nanak Dukya Subsansad, that, oh Nanak, there's suffering all around. And with that, like, that's in Gurbani, and we read that, and you might know that, but when you read it, it's like a reminder to that philosophy, and then you realize that, oh yeah, there is suffering, real mm-hmm. suffering, it's, it's all around us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just a quick uh, story I want to tell about, it's a story about suffering and about struggle. Uh, basically, the story goes like this. There was once this girl, and she found a cocoon. Mm-hmm. So somebody might not know what cocoon is. Cocoon is basically is what like a caterpillar is inside, and it becomes a butterfly when it comes out of the cocoon. Mm-hmm. So this little girl, she finds a cocoon, and she brings it to her house. And she puts it in her room, and puts it in like, you know, has like the heat lamp and everything. And she goes, I want to watch the caterpillar transform into a butterfly. So she's all excited. Every day she's checking it and checking it and seeing the progress. Sees nothing, sees nothing, sees nothing. And then one day, she goes over there and she sees one small little hole. And she sees the head of the caterpillar mm. trying to come out. And she's watching it. She's like, oh, it's starting to happen. But then the day goes on and she's still seeing that the caterpillar is struggling. It can barely get out of the hole. It's, not, it's kind of having a hard time coming out of that hole. So what she uh, decides to do is she's like, you know what? She kind of felt sorry for the caterpillar. Mm. She goes, you know what? Maybe I'll help him out a little bit. Give him a little hand. So she takes an X-Acto knife. And she, that little hole in there, she made it a little bit bigger, right? And when she made it a little bit bigger, the caterpillar, it just came out. It, it came out very easily. It didn't struggle. There was no suffering, no, there's yeah. kind of like no pain, no gain. It just came out, no, uh, no, no problem. It, it comes out. And when, she, when it came out, she looked at it, and the body was all big. The body was huge, but the wings were just tiny. And she felt really, really uh, hurt by this. She's like, well, what's going on? Yeah. I wonder why the caterpillar, why the wings are so small and the body's all big. And the caterpillar, you know, was just kind of like crawling around. It couldn't even fly, couldn't barely walk or anything. And she felt really bad. So she took that um, uh, caterpillar and she went to her teacher, like her biology teacher. And she goes, I don't know what happened. Look what, how, how it turned out. And the biology teacher looks at it and she goes, did you do anything to the cocoon? <laughs> and she goes, yes, I did. I tried to help that uh, caterpillar out and I cut and I made the hole a little bit bigger. And she goes, you shouldn't have done that. Mm. And she goes, why? Because the thing was, she goes, the way God has made it, it's that God's nature, God's will, that that small little hole that caterpillar is trying to come through, what it does is when it's trying to go through the hole and struggling mm-hmm. to get through the hole, it's actually squeezing the blood from the body to the wings. Yeah. So the wings get formed like that. And she goes, because you took that struggle away, 
that the progress went away yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. So you can't avoid the suffering. It's, it's almost good for you because everything God does, He's an all-loving being. Everything He's doing for you, He's doing it because He loves you, right? And one thing that's interesting is that maybe if we see pain there as necessary, maybe we should take pleasure in it. Mm -hmm. Pleasure in pain and see pain in worldly pleasure, right? And one thing that's interesting is not only how you can look at pain and how you can look at pleasure, but how pleasure can turn into pain. I think that one thing that's ironic about human life is that we, we know about the concept of heaven, we know about the concept of union with God, but it's ironic that we search for things that kind of d lead us away from that. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Like how we, s we search for worldly pleasures, kind of short-term, unstable pleasures. Mm -hmm. When we know that pleasure, like why would you go for anything else other than union with God? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think that sometimes uh, too many desires also mm -hmm. can lead to pain and suffering as yeah. well, right? If we have so many des desires in our life, and when the, de when the desires go unfulfilled, what happens? Unhappiness, mm -hmm. right? So Guru Sahib does not tell us that, you know, don't have any desires, right? It's okay to have a desire to be, you know, successful, have a good career, and, mm -hmm. you know, have a family. It's fine, right? But say, have contentment as well. Don't have so much desire for more and more and more, because then the chances of those desires becoming unfulfilled become higher, and which can lead, lead us to unhappiness. Definitely, we should have the one desire for God. And an analogy that comes to mind is how, like say there's a child, and uh, like a very young child, and he's with his mom, and say they go to like the mall or something, and the, the, the mother gives the child a lollipop, his favorite type of lollipop, and he's looking at it, and he's like, yeah, and all his focus is to that lollipop. And then, when, he, when the lollipop's finished, he forgets about his mom. His mom kind of went somewhere else. And then he looks up and he's like, Where's my mom? Where's my mama? Right? And he, all of a sudden, he forgets about the lollipop, forgets about all the lollipops around him, and the only thing he's focused on is getting to his mom. Where's my mom? How far is she? What do I need to do to get her? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And in the same way, that's how we should feel about this human life, that everything, all these worldly pleasures, are the, is that lollipop. And the, the actual thing that we should be desiring is union with God. Yeah, sort of like a distraction kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, like a lot of things, if you look at for worldly things and look uh, towards pleasure or having eternal pleasure from worldly things, it's not going to happen because w something that can give us pleasure one day could turn to pain the next day, mm. right? And a, and a lot of things can, right? Uh, it could be somebody who does a lot of drugs or drinks a lot and then, you know, they, they're get, getting drunk, stuff like that, and the next day, you know, the hangover, yeah. right? Turns to pain. Or same thing as like buying a brand new car, oh. like a brand new, you know, Mercedes or BMW, you're all happy, you have so much pleasure. Then like 10 years down the road when it's in the mechanic shop <laughs> all the time, down. breaking down, you're getting yeah. embarrassed all the time on the side yeah. of the street, right? Um, then it, it, it can yeah. turn into, uh, into uh, pain as well. So everything that's worldly, the, the pleasure that is worldly, it's temporary. It can never be eternal. Like, whether it's, it's a person as well, it could be anybody. It could be somebody who's your best friend for so many years. And then what happens is something happens, you get in a fight break apart. So everything is, is uh, sort of temporary, yeah. right? And the, the worldly pleasures are temporary. Yeah, and pleasure is something, so we know that it's temporary. We know that when you buy what you think is the newest laptop on the market, you know that in a little while it's not going to be the newest laptop and you're going to find duk or pain in that pleasure. What you saw was pleasure, it's going to change. And in the same way, we have to, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> in the yeah. same way, we have to, what? <laughs> <laughs> in the same way, we have to realize that, that those pains, these worldly pains, are, these worldly pleasures are going to turn into pains and then we have to search for the utmost pleasure, the mm -hmm. Paramanand. Gurbani focuses on something and it says that pleasure and pain alike. Look at pleasure and pain alike. And I'll read a few Gurbani Panktis here talking about pleasure and pain alike. Guru Sahib tells us, Jaake doke soke samakar japae, kaako kaada kaha biyape. It says those who look alike upon pain and pleasure, how can anxiety touch them? So it's a matter of trying to, it's a, it's a state of mind we have, how we look at things, right? It's almost like, you know, for example, we have a rainy day. Yeah. Somebody might be like, oh, it's a rainy day, it's a bad day outside, right? Or it's bad weather. But there's a quote that says, there's no such thing as bad weather, there's different types of good weather, right? Mm -hmm. So in the same way, we can think of life, the experiences, and no, no such thing as a bad experience, there's different types of good experiences. Why? Because everything we experience in our life is a learning experience, right? We can learn something from it, from pain or from pleasure. It's always something that we can we can learn from. Mm -hmm. And if we talk about eternal happiness, happiness that lasts forever, like we said before, mm -hmm. in worldly things, there's always a chance of our pleasure yeah. turning to pain. Yeah. But when it comes to um, eternal pleasure, how do we get eternal pleasure? And Guru Sahib explains that to us, how to get eternal peace or eternal pleasure. Guru Sahib says, Man ananda sada sukhapaya 
Petya Gher Gambir. And that means the mind obtains bliss and eternal peace meeting with the deep and profound Lord. And once again, Guru Sahib, another thing that Guru Sahib tells us, another Pankti, Sada Ananda Rehe Din Rati Mil Pritham Sukhapai. That such a person remains blissful forever, day and night, meeting the beloved, peace is found. So mm-hmm. it's like the true peace, the peace that lasts forever, the eternal peace, it comes when uh, our soul yeah. merges with God, that union with God, and it lasts forever. That and, peace can never be destroyed. And that's so beyond any pleasure that a human could experience, right? We weren't limited to the five senses, even words. What we're trying to explain now, we keep referring to it as pleasure, right? But we can't exactly describe what it exactly feels like because it's so beyond our human capacity. So we have to have that notion of un- unconditional love, and we have to see that God is beyond human and He's giving us, us that unconditional love and all we can do is give that love back to other people and to God mm-hmm. we have to strive for that yeah. uh, one thing I want to talk about here I was watching the Canucks game the other day mm-hmm. and w- while I was watching the game I was actually thinking about Dokken Sok while I was watching it I was thinking yeah. about, about the show that's good, and keeping God on your mind <laughs> keeping God on my mind, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. <laughs> so we're watching the, I was watching the game at the end of the game Canucks won and I saw the Canucks, they're all celebrating and I'm like, you're thinking about, okay, they're in Sook. And the other team was sad. You know, they yeah. had their heads down, right? So if you look at uh, life, our life is like a game, right? And the object, the objective in this game is to become one with God. And we can either win in this game or we can lose in this game. Mm. And if we look at somebody who wastes their life away and does not meditate on God, does not do good deeds, does not have love for everyone, they sort of lost that chance, they lost mm. that game. And there's a Gurba, uh, in Gurbani, uh, Guru Sahib tells us, Man Mukhi Man Hataharya Kud Kost Kamae. And it means the self-willed Manamuk, the ones who follow their own minds, yeah. through stubborn mindedness and the practice of falsehood, lose the game of life. But Guru Sahib also tells us that there are winners as well. The mm. one who meditates upon the game, uh, up, upon the name of God, becomes one with God. When they leave this world, what happens to them? And what that means is, O servant Nanak, that person who plays this game as Gurmukh, mm. the one who follows the teachings of the Guru, one who lives a, God, uh, a, a lifestyle dedicated to God, what happens to them? They win the game of life and return to their true home. Yeah, and what does the t- Guru teach? He teaches to see pleasure and pain as like, as Maharaji the kid, as Maharaji's as hukum. God's, as hukum, as will God's God. game. And this is all the will of God. And um, it's interesting when you see pleasure as pain and pain as pleasure. There's actually a Gurbani folk. It's Jai Sukhde, Tanto Jai Radhe, Dukh Pi To Jai And what that means is, if you bless me with happiness, then I'll worship and adore you. Even in pain, I'll meditate on you. So really, seeing pain as pleasure, so if you lost that Canucks game, see it as acceptance. It's all about accepting and finding pleasure in things that people may not usually find. Yeah. And the next line, in the, in, the, in the one that you read, right, the next yeah. line is, Je poke deheta itihi raja dokhavich sukhmanai. It's so important. Dokhavich sukhmanai, meaning that even through times of dokh, even through times of, of unhappiness, or t- times of suffering or pain, or times of sorrow, that we still celebrate joy. Yeah. We stay joyful at all times because everything happens according to the will of God and it's all about our state of mind, how we look at things, right? It's our positive outlook, how if we see things, we take the positives from it and we hold on to the positives, but we see the negatives, but we don't keep them by our side. Mm-hmm. We don't keep worldly suffering, physical suffering and mental suffering by our side. The only thing that we do keep by our side is spiritual suffering and that's what really counts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, are we just running out of time now? Yes. Yeah, I hope, I hope we don't put you through too much suffering until <laughs> next week episode. But, um, yes, so uh, if you have any comments or suggestions on the show, please feel free to email us at seekingsikhism at gmail.com. It's our email. And you can drop us a line and give us any discussion questions that you guys might have that you want us to talk about. Right? We're just asking you guys what you want to talk about, and we'll give you what you guys want to hear. Yep. Okay, that's All right, it. That's it. Okay, Jay. Why did you get Why did you get